going to preface this whole project with a giant, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm doing it right. I think I'm gonna ice my hand all night. My wrist is killing me. Promise there is a method to the madness. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. I'm over it. It is time for drastic DIY measures. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, uh, last week I kind of teased you because I said I had a project coming up that got delayed. So I ended up doing the coat uh, because things that were needed for this project were just delayed. They're all here. So it's time to do this. And I am going to preface this whole project with a giant, I have no idea what I'm doing. A lot of my projects, I have learn skills and little things, but I'm always trying to grow and learn new skills. But I generally have done things before or know what I'm doing. This project is brand new for me. So anybody that comes to my channel looking for tutorials or a how-to, I'm not that guy. I have never claimed to be that guy. This channel is about me attempting these projects and me trying to learn and grow constantly. So that's what I'm doing today. I have never done this before and I'm scared and excited. All that being said, something happened a month ago that I was so excited about. I was in the middle of another project and this happened. Story time. I am doing a completely different project right now. I, I was on my way to Joanne Fabrics. And I was about to turn on the street and I was so close to the Habitat for Humanity Restore store. And I was like, you know, I haven't checked recently. Let me just run in there really quickly on the off chance today because, because I've been looking for a wing back chair for my bedroom, specifically for that office area. Now, the one that I really, really loved that I was like my inspiration was this Crate and Barrel one that was more rounded, um, had like a really, it was, it was kind of a modern take on a wingback chair, but it was leather and I loved it, but I wasn't about to pay, you know, I think it was like 2,500 bucks for a chair. I'm just, I, I can't do that. Um, so I have been looking and looking for couple months now for a wingback chair that I could try to reupholster. And uh, I just haven't found any that I've really, really liked. There have been a lot, but they've just been really squared off or just not the shape that I was looking for. And I just ran in today on the off chance. Oh my gosh, my lucky day. And guess how much it was? $40, $40. It's actually, um, I looked under the cushion, it's from Z Gallery. It's kind of an ugly upholstery and it's really, it's been, it's seen some stuff, it's dirty, but that's okay. I wanna repulster it anyway, but the shape is perfect. Oh my gosh, I, I got in there and I saw it and I was just like, wait, what? This is not what I had on the agenda for today, but it looks like fate had something else in store for me. I am so excited. This is, it's perfect. It is perfect. Now I actually have to figure out how to reupholster it. And that should be fun. I'm so excited. 
Now, I totally was not expecting to find this on that day. Like I said, I was just passing by and was like, eh, maybe I should stop in. I have been semi looking for a chair like this for a couple months now, knowing that I wanted to do this project down the road. And the opportunity arose and I was like, listen, when it comes to thrift shops, you kind of just have to get it now. And it was $40. And it was exactly the shape that I wanted. It was exactly what I saw in my head. I just hated the fabric and it needed to be reupholstered anyway because it clearly, the fabric has seen some stuff. So I am reupholstering this chair today. Um, I have never attempted anything like this before. I have watched so many tutorials, so many different people do different chairs. I have literally, I feel like, gotten every tool that I think I might need, even stuff that I think I wouldn't need for this. I was like, you know what? I just want to have everything on hand. Who knows? I may love reupholstering stuff, and it may become the main priority of this channel from now on. It not, don't worry. But <laughs> I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Like, this is a new skill. It, I love learning new things. I love being curious. I love being creative. And this is like jumping off a cliff and we're gonna see if I land. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna bring the chair out. Now, don't laugh at me because this chair, I want it for my bedroom. That was the plan. I wanted it for my desk area because I'm going for this whole old world vibey thing and I wanted a wingback chair in there. When I got it up here about a month ago, it barely fit through the door. I had to really slide and wiggle it. So um, I'm gonna try to get it back out here because I have more room out here to work. But as I attempt to try to get out of my room, you'll see, it's, it's large. <laughs> So let's talk about what I like about this thing. I like the height of it. I like that it's not like a super, super tall wingback. I really love the shape. A lot of wingback chairs uh, are have a little bit sharper lines and stuff. And I love that this just has a nice curve here. Things I hate, obviously the fabric, that's why we're changing it. I hopefully would like to not add these buttons back, but maybe I'm gonna need to, to get that curve back. If that has to happen, that has to happen. I'm fine with it. Obviously, I'm not going to be putting these, I don't like this, this is very, this chair is Z Gallery. If you can't tell, it has that very Z Gallery aesthetic with the silvery kind of fabric and the chrome detailing here. It's very Z Gallery, not my aesthetic at all, but I love the shape. The most important part of this right now, this taking a part of it, is me really trying to remember piece by piece how they put it together so that when I'm taking it apart, I can theoretically just make patterns out of some of the pieces if I can get them off in a whole piece. If I can't, then we will adjust from there. This is a learning process. So let's try to take this thing apart. It was 40 bucks. If it goes wrong, it was 40 bucks. Well, and the fabric. It's not gonna go wrong. Think positive thoughts. Let's go. Luckily, it's pretty light. And right off the bat, I realized I am missing a tool. I forgot to get any kind of a staple remover. I thought I could just do it with a screwdriver and pliers, and I could, it just took forever ever and my hands were killing me by the end of it.
I think now that I have the bottom all undone, I think my next step is, because the next thing like really holding anything in place is these pieces that run here. So I think I'm gonna try to get those off. And I already started and obviously these are all little individual nails. So let's see how long this takes. I think I'm gonna have to get a tack remover and it says it's in stock at my like local hardware store just down the street. So I'm just gonna pick that up. Let's try this again. I got this tool here that's supposed to help. Let's see. Oh my gosh, this thing is a lifesaver. So much better. This metal tack strip stuff is probably the thing that I was the most nervous about working with. Not only about putting it back on, but trying to take it off just because it is a bunch of sharp edges. But I basically just worked my way slowly up to the top, removing this back piece, and it came off pretty easily. I really should have counted the amount of staples that I removed by the end of this project. So many. Huh? Uh, honestly, uh, taking it apart is making me feel a lot more confident about putting it back together again because I'm able to see exactly what they did and uh, hopefully I can just replicate it over. And uh, this is great because I actually have, you know, like a pattern to follow. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the uh, tack strip stuff carefully so I don't hurt myself here. Then uh, figure out how I wanna take the inside. Okay guys, I am going to leave it there. I have to still take off this bottom part, but it looks like it's actually stapled in under wrapped 
under those, whatever. Um, but I have to stop. I honestly didn't think it would take me this long just to get the fabric off. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just trying to get all these staples out. Literally, I think I'm gonna ice my hand all night. My wrist is killing me. We're gonna pick it up first thing in the morning. So have a good night, guys. Good morning, guys. We are back at it. I need to figure out how to disconnect this bottom piece completely. And honestly, I might just cut some of this stuff because it's just kind of stapled. Like the excess is just kind of stapled on the end there. And my fingers are so sore from removing all of those staples. And honestly, with all the padding and stuff that goes over the top of it, you're never going to see it. So um, I might just do that just to get it off because I really would like to focus on the patterning. I think it's all pretty straightforward. I did, however, um, because I'm kind of the original um, idea that I was thinking about for this chair was that crate and barrel chair that was a little bit more modern. I think instead of putting the buttons back, I was looking at that crate and barrel chair and because it has seam lines that go both horizontally and vertically, instead of one solid piece in the back and having the buttons, I kind of like having the seam lines uh, just because it added a little bit of modernity to it. Uh, and I think that's, I like that a little bit better than the buttons. Um, so I think I'm going to try to do that, which is fine because I have the full pattern for the full piece. I just need to break it up into sections and then, uh, sew the seams and that way I can kind of, um, use the seam lines as the things that I pull back to create the shape instead of the buttons that pull back to create the shape. I hope I'm doing it right. Um, but this is a learning process. So, um, anyway, I'm going to jump right into it, try to get this thing fully removed from the seat so that I can start making some patterns and start sewing some of these pieces together and get this thing put back together. Let's go. This final piece ended up coming off really easily. Uh, I ended up cutting it, but it won't affect the pattern at all since it's at a place at the bottom that's never going to be seen and it's going to be covered by padding. I tried to prevent it, but I did end up having to remove this back panel just so I could access the fabric at the bottom. Okay, so this is where we're at right now. This piece is attached to this, sewn onto it. And I could take that all off, but it's also attached to, they glued this um, batting over the top of it. Uh, and I don't wanna mess with any of the padding or batting or whatever we're calling it, um, because uh, I want it to stay in the same shape, which is fine because it's gonna be under the seat, so it's not gonna be very noticeable. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this off right here. And then I'll just make one whole piece for uh, the base under here to connect to. So uh, that's where we're at. I'm gonna go ahead and I think work on the cushion first, because I feel like that's gonna be, I don't wanna say easy, but um, something more that I can wrap my head around and then I can work on the bigger pieces. Yeah, I think that's my plan of action. So I knew I wanted to do a brown leather, but I also knew that I wasn't gonna do real leather, one, because of cost, and two, I didn't wanna ruin real leather on a project that I wasn't completely sure of. I found this faux leather vinyl online wholesale, and it wasn't exactly what I had in mind. It had a little bit more texture than I would have liked, but it was on wholesale and I got 10 yards of it for really, really cheap, a lot cheaper than the seven or eight yards actually that I was gonna need. So for a project that I was a little trepidatious about, I'm really happy with this find. And I just broke down the existing seat cushion into individual pieces to create the pattern for the new vinyl cushion. Yeah. 
And I definitely jinxed myself by thinking this cushion was going to be the easiest part of this build. This material was so tough to work with. It was so thick, sewing with an upholstery fabric. It was a nightmare to sew this thing. Okay, fingers crossed because this was a much bigger chore than I thought it was gonna be. It's a pretty simple design. I ended up cutting out the uh, cording that went around it because I was having so much difficulty with it. And my, you know, I only have a regular sewing machine. I don't have anything heavy duty. So trying to go through that many layers and trying to get a cording foot, it just wasn't happening. So I still probably do it around the back because uh, I can just staple that. But this obviously couldn't be stapled. And I was like, you know what? It's fine. It'll be more streamlined anyway without the cording. Uh, so it's fine. Huh. It's a seat. It fits. Looking good. Um, I might need, there's a little bit of puckering around the corners that I might take care of, but other than that, uh, all right, let's figure out this upholstery thing. So this is the only piece that I don't know the exact kind of dimensions for because I didn't remove all of this. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover it. But basically this piece wraps down here and goes all the way to the back and kind of goes on the side and creates like the base layer here. So basically what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna focus on the back first and getting it attached in the back and getting it cut around these back wood pieces in the back back there, then get it pulled off to the sides and I will leave it hanging here on the front because I can do that later. But as long as I have it tucked and fully secure down here, then I can take start taking care of all of this and work my way up and then finish the bottoms uh, at the very end. I think that's my plan. So let me get the stapler and my scissors and uh, start putting this thing together. thing that scares me the most I'm gonna try to make that whole piece that was on the inside which I think is gonna be a lot tougher than the outside one especially because I'm changing up that seam lines so let's pull out the old piece and try to make a pattern out of it I'm gonna make it a lot bigger obviously so that I have room to stretch it rather the seams be in the perfect place where I need them to be and then have extra on the sides that I could just cut off Once I got the pattern pieces separated, I started by figuring out where I wanted those new seam lines to go on that center piece. I cut up that center piece on those lines, and when cutting out my new fabric, I added, obviously, seam allowances where I was going to sew the new seams. I started by stitching my new seams together and adding a top stitch just for a little decorative appearance, kind of like that crate and barrel chair that I love so much. Once I had all my new seams added to that centerpiece, I was able to attach the arms on both sides. And let me tell you, this fabric is not light. With each piece I added, this thing got heavier and harder to sew. Guys, it is absolutely a miracle, but... We got there. So this is, <laughs> I obviously, I did a lot of excess on the edges because I would rather, you know, if I'm short, there's really nothing I can do. So I would rather have more than less. Um, but this is the inside piece all sewn up. I think it actually turned out pretty well. So now the fun part, getting it attached and getting it into the perfect position. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure all of my lines are in the right spot specifically before I start stapling anything. Those are the things that I need to make sure, make sure, and then I can start working on the shape, you know, and cutting away all the excess. So, um, fingers crossed, let's go. <laughs>
that was tough and really frustrating but honestly uh i like it i think it's i think it's turning out really really well i'm really excited it was it's definitely not easy and i'm sure there are plenty of people out there any advice I'll gladly take because I, I, I watched a lot of stuff and I tried to do my research, but doing it is a whole nother thing. But I'm feeling good. I feel like this was going to be the tough part because the back kind of just wraps around. Knock on wood. Um, I am going to clean up a little bit because I have scraps all over the place right now. And I'm going to put the back, um, the back wood piece back on. Uh, so that I can start getting that um, final back piece attached. And hopefully, we'll see how quick that goes. Fingers crossed. And even though I didn't add the cording back to the cushion, I am adding it to this detail here. And I'm so glad I did. You will see why in a little bit. All right, we're coming up to the point where I was kind of nervous because I've never worked with this flexible tack strip before. I've watched a lot of videos again. I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Anything that has like a curve, I'm just gonna follow all the way along. Hopefully it goes well. This stuff is a nightmare to work with. Obviously I don't have a pneumatic upholstery stapler, so I had to flatten out the entire strip just to get the stapler in the right position. Even then trying to get the staples in the small hole that it needs to go in was next to impossible. Anybody want to take a guess on how many times I've cut myself in the middle of this project? Um, <laughs> uh, this is so frustrating. I mean, I'm so close, but it's... Mm. I will never work with this stuff again. And if that means I never upholster again, then so be it. This tax drift stuff is the worst. I, uh, I couldn't get the stapler in there because it was too wide, so I had to like pry each individual one down and make them flat so I could staple them. Trying to staple them, trying to get the staples in these little holes here was next to impossible. I was just shooting blanks like 90% of the time. And when I finally did get it, uh, like just, just a nightmare. And now I'm having to individually turn them all up again. There's gotta be a better solution. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but this is a nightmare. And now my finger won't stop bleeding. I decided not to let my frustration get the better of me and I just moved on to creating the pattern pieces for the back. And this was obviously a lot easier than creating the front pieces because I wasn't changing anything. I was following the exact pattern that they had used before. And before calling it a night, I just attached this piece to the straight edge at the top. And that was about all I could emotionally handle for the day. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, guys. We're so close. We are so close. The back piece is already attached at the top here. I just need to stretch it down and get all of these side pieces, which I still am not entirely confident about what I'm doing there. So um, that's gonna be a little bit of trial and error, but I'm so close. And not to mention, we still need to get those uh, front sections done. I need to make those, but we're close. And I really, Want to get this project done so i am going to jump right in and knock on wood today goes a lot smoother than yesterday did so let's go Okay guys, 
Um, it is time for drastic DIY measures because this stuff just ain't it. Um, the more research I do, I mean, I, I need like a special pneumatic stapler to get the longer staples. They just don't make long staples for just like a normal heavy duty stapler. And these staple staples aren't holding it, not to mention this fabric and these things, like it just doesn't stay in the grooves there. So, um, you know, every tutorial made it seem perfectly easy and you just pop it up and it's great. Um, not working. And I've cut myself way more times than I care to mention. So I'm gonna rip this all off and we're gonna do a little DIY trick because I'm over it. And honestly, uh, there are other ways to get this to stay permanently. So. This project has tried me and tried me and tried me and I refuse to let this defeat me. We are so close. So my answer is like any true DIYer, E6000. We're gonna glue this thing. <sighs> I moved into the bedroom because ultimately this is where I plan, I intend this thing to live. And because I have to like squeeze it, it barely fits in there because I have to squeeze it in here. I was like, well, I'm just gonna finish it in here so that way it has, you know, a couple days to sit and just be, and it's out of the way and really let the glue set before I start actively using it. My plan is right now, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the bottom completely and then I don't have to worry about flipping it over or anything like that. So then I can start the glue up and taping all of the edges around there. And then the final thing we need to do is these decorative pieces on the front here. And then we're done. The idea for the glue made sense to me at the time, but in retrospect, it just made a huge mess and didn't really help anything. Luckily for me, because this is the back, it's going to be hidden most of the time, and it's also not the side that needs to be practical and that's going to be sat on constantly. So at the very least, it won't have to go through as much wear and tear as the inside, which is really secure. I ended up foregoing the glue and hand stitched this entire back piece to that trim piece that I had added earlier. This took forever, but it gave me such a nice finish and it was a lot more secure. My thumbs were numb by the end of the process, but it was worth it. It's not perfect, but the back side is done. Luckily, the side that's actually gonna be facing the door and the room most of the time is the better side. I did the other side first and learned a lot from that, but that's okay. It's gonna be <laughs> against the wall most of the time. Uh, so the only thing left is these front pieces here. So um, I'm going to cover them in fabric, hopefully attach them, knock on wood. I'm not even gonna say easily because I'm just gonna jinx myself. I'm so close. I am so close. And I'm just using hot glue to hold it in place temporarily, but there is E6000 on the back of this piece to hold it permanently. 
And with those two pieces glued in place, this chair is finally, finally, finally done. You guys, it's done. Uh, <laughs> this was a journey. I'm, you know what? I'm happy I did it. I'm happy it's finished. Is it up to the standard that I usually like to hold myself to? I would say no, which is frustrating, but also it was a $40 chair. So it's not the end of the world. Honestly, it's more just the time I put into it that I'm just that is just frustrating. But for my first time, I'm proud of it. I have learned a lot from it. Do I plan on doing another upholstery anytime soon? No, no, I don't. But I've had the experience, and uh, you know what? I, there was a moment there where I was like, "Why am I even filming this? I shouldn't show you this." But you know what? Not every DIY goes perfectly. And that's just kind of life. Uh, I've had plenty of projects not go according to plan. Um, this being a perfect example. Um, but you push through and I finished and I'm happy. At least I finished it. You guys, thanks for coming on this journey with me. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, join us. We do projects every week all over the house. We have vlogs. Join the channel, join the community, and I will catch you guys on the next one. I am going to lay down. I am exhausted. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.